Welcome to everyone, both in person and online. Hi to Ariana. Um, we're going to be diving really deep into LinkedIn today. And I know it sounds like, oh, LinkedIn, that's not necessarily super exciting. But I promise you by the end, you're going to see why it's so relevant. So just a little uh, love where love is due. Please give a huge round of applause to Mr. Schmidt, to Jim for helping coordinate this session, hooking you up with all these good resources. And I got to tell you, Jim is an absolute force of nature, as you know already, because he's doing this completely pro bono on his own, just to make sure that the next generation has access to the best opportunities. And I can speak for that for myself, because I actually got my start not in Silicon Valley, where I am right now, but as a kindergarten teacher of all things, back in New York City, and through my love of technology, just being a big nerd, frankly, I ended up working at Apple and Google, most recently at Khan Academy, which many of you probably know. And it was actually through a job at LinkedIn about a decade ago that my eyes really opened to how the world really works. And I think one of the things that I didn't appreciate when I was in your shoes, let alone even when I was in college, is that the world of hiring, like if you want to get a job at Google or you want to start your own company, there are all these things behind the scenes that no one told me about, and I don't want you to have to make the same mistakes. So I'm going to take you inside that world share with you the same insider secrets that I usually share with MBAs, alumni, people who are 10 or 20 years past where you are. But I want you to know these secrets now so you can start winning the jobs and the opportunities that you're excited about immediately. And all I ask in return is three simple favors. Number one, I'm going to ask you to answer some pop quizzes, which shouldn't be too hard <laughs> given that a lot of you are in school. Number two, I'm going to ask for you to volunteer for a couple of live role plays. If you are brave enough to volunteer, traditionally, I would give out a copy of this uh, chat GPT for careers book that I have, but I'm actually going to give you something better. I am going to give you a free profile review from yours truly. So even if you have no LinkedIn or you're not happy with the way your LinkedIn is, you're going to be able to make it awesome and get found by the actual employers that you want to work with. And then third and finally, the most important thing I can ask of you is don't just look at my screen. Take everything on my screen and try it on your own. Because I promise you, if you just watch and just listen, you're going to forget it all. But if you actually take action today, get your hands dirty, you will burn these techniques into your muscle memory, and they'll be there for you for the rest of your life. So with that said, time for the first pop quiz. If you had to guess how many resumes the average recruiter is juggling at any given time, I want you to give this a guess. And just to sort of set the stage, a recruiter is the person in a company who's in charge of filling an empty role. So imagine you want to be a data analyst or a robotics engineer at some really cool company. There is someone whose entire job is to find you and help get you into that role. And because we all know about resumes and applying for jobs, how many do you think they're dealing with at any given moment? Is it A, 100, B, 1,000, or C, 10,000? Now, if you're online like Connor and John and Joshua and Sarah, Put your answer right in the chat. But if you're in the room, we're going to actually crowdsource this. So get the answer at the tip of your lips. And we're going to count down from three. I'm going to point to you. And you're going to shout it out at the top of your uh, top of your voice. Here we go. Get that answer ready. Three, two, one, go. B. Okay, I heard a lot of Bs. Is that what you heard, Jim and Jeff? Yep. Okay. So B sounds reasonable. And Joshua says B. John says B. Connor says B. But check this out. The answer is C. Look at this crazy data. According to the world's largest HR organization, basically in charge of recruiting, the average recruiter has 30 to 40 open jobs to fill. The average job attracts 250 resumes. Do that simple math, and you can see these poor recruiters are buried. So now, if you had to imagine how long a recruiter spends looking at your resume, is it six seconds? 25 seconds or 60 seconds? So one more time, my online friends, give me your answers in the chat. And in the room, here comes your next countdown. Three, two, one, go. Okay, I heard a lot of Bs that time. What did you guys hear, Jim and Jeff? A. You heard A, okay, that's good. That's what I was thinking. Now, um, John Myers online, you were one of the first folks to say A, which I love. John, do you mind unmuting for just one second? Tell us why you picked A. What's your intuition? You can just click that little microphone icon, 
Give yourself the freedom to speak. Okay, if John, you're not able to do that, no worries. Let's go over to Joshua Chow. Um, Joshua, you also said A. If you don't mind clicking the microphone icon, let us know live why did you choose A. Oh, be honest. I I just uh oh I just made a guess. I just I just made a guess. If I'm being completely honest, that's fair. Guess what? You guess correct. Check this out, Joshua. You nailed one of the most critical insights in this entire secret of world of hiring, because the reality is you could be a high school student or a college student who spent six hours or 66 hours trying to make your resume perfect. But on the other side of the screen, you have six seconds to make this critical first impression. And so what I'm going to be sharing with you today is what happens in those six seconds, what's going on inside that black box of the hiring process and how you can use your insider secrets to figure out exactly how to get hired. Because here's the real deal. Here in the year 2024, I know of exactly zero recruiters left in the world who are still reading every last resume, even at just six seconds a pop, because we are living in a world of LinkedIn, a world where all of a sudden, as a recruiter, I can just instantly search for every professional under the sun and find the perfect person. So the real question is not just how to apply to a job with a resume, but how to get found on LinkedIn. And the first step there is to know what they're searching for. So think about this for a second. If you were a recruiter and you were searching LinkedIn for the world's best people, are you searching for certain degrees? Show me someone with a BA or a BS. For certain schools? Show me someone who went to University of Illinois or Harvard or certain job titles. Show me someone who can be a data analyst or a robotics engineer. So for everyone in the room, here's our next countdown. Three, two, one, go. Yay. Ooh, that's interesting. What did you hear, Jeff and Jim? A bit of everything. A bit of everything. Me too. That's what I heard. Let's go to Connor online. Connor, you said C. If you don't mind unmuting, what's your thought process, Connor? Um, My thought process was like some people don't necessarily have a school degree or like stuff like that, but they still have the job title and that's more relevant than especially a degree because like one degree can be 10 different jobs, but one job is an, uh, the same job at a different company. Yeah. Oh, Connor, you nailed it. If you understand the intense cru crucible that a recruiter is in, I've got 40 jobs to fill. I've got all these resumes. I've got all these people online. I'm not fooling around with schools or degrees. I want to know who can do the actual job and to prove it to you. I am now taking you guys inside the most important screen in the entire hiring process that no job seeker ever gets to see. And that includes your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle. They may have applied for a million jobs, but I guarantee you, unless they're a recruiter, they have never seen this holy grail because this is LinkedIn Recruiter, a separate product that LinkedIn sells just to the recruiting world. And it's crazy expensive. $10,000 per year, per seat, per recruiter. And the reason they can get away with charging so much is this is a recruiter's dream. All the world's talent in one place, all easily searchable. I can find the exact people to do my jobs. So with that in mind, here's what I want you to do next. I want you to look at your own LinkedIn profile. Now, if you don't have a profile, no worries. Now would be a great time to start building one. But if you do have a profile, I want you to look at the thing called the headline, the little piece of text right below your name. And if it says something like high school student or college student, all of those are great things. But where I want you to be by the end of the session is broadcasting a clear signal of where you're headed next, because that's what recruiters are looking for. And if you want them to find you, you've got to make it easy to be found. So first time for a giveaway. If you want to win a free LinkedIn profile review straight from an insider, I want you to raise your hand right now, either in the classroom or online using the Zoom hand raise button. Raise those hands loud and proud, and I will help you find a perfect path for you to explore. So let's see right now. In the classroom, Jim, Jeff, did you see any hands go up? Who would you like to bring to the stage for our very first uh, session? Uh, I see a lot of hands. Uh, go ahead. Are you uh, All right. Huge round of applause, everyone. To, to our Bill's shirt wearing friend. I love that. As long as you can get close to the microphone, that's great. Hey, what's your name, my friend? My name is Ayush. 
Ayush, great to meet you. Um, Ayush, you well. tell me this. I know it's early in your career. You've got a whole ton of exciting opportunities ahead of you. But if you had any inkling of what you might want to do in college for an internship or even after college, any sense of what that might be? Um, software engineering. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Have you taken some coding classes? I have. Oh, I'm so jealous. Okay, so you definitely have a plan coming together. Now, tell me this, Ayush. If you want to discover what's a really good fit for you, do you want to just sort of go out there and go for the job? Or do you want to talk to some people doing that job first? Would that be helpful? Yeah, talking to people would be helpful. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to show you a crazy hack. Now, is it right that you guys are in Naperville right now? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So I believe this is going to be true. Bear with me for a second. I'm going to go to LinkedIn and I'm going to try to look up your high school. So Naperville, is it um community unit school district or Naperville North? Naperville North. No, no, no. Okay. So here we go. Check this out. On LinkedIn, especially for colleges, but even for high schools, there is this thing called the alumni tab. And this is the product that my team built when I was at LinkedIn with the specific goal of giving you access to amazing alums. So how would you like to find some amazing uh, Maperville North grads who are in software engineering? Would that be interesting to you? Yes. Okay, check this out. So we come over here, we plug in software engineer. And again, everyone can do this right now. You're just looking for your school, you're looking for the alumni tab, and check this out, they're everywhere. They're at IBM, Microsoft, Deloitte, Accenture, on and on and on. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna choose um, Samantha, who's a software engineer at Cohere Health. So this uh, health tech startup out here in the California world. Now, if you want to reach out to Samantha to strike up a conversation, you want to click this big blue connect button. But do not make the rookie mistake of just sending it because then it's kind of like an anonymous note. That's not even clear. You want to add a message. Now, tell me this, Ayush. I know this is totally weird, totally crazy, but understand that Samantha wants to talk to you. Samantha is excited to share what she's learned with the next generation, but you've got to make it clear to Samantha what you have in common. So with that in mind, what do you think would be a great opening line for this message? Um, maybe talk, talk about how she's a software engineer and that's a career that you're interested in pursuing. So like, Yeah, absolutely. And before we even get there, what do you already share oh, on day one? You're an alumni from the same high school. Yeah, that's amazing. So I'm a Naperville North student who's super passionate um, about coding, I guarantee you within that first sentence, you've already won her over. Because I will tell you, I am ancient. I've been out of high school for 25 years. Ayush, how many students from my high school do you think have ever reached out to me about a job at Google or a job at Apple? Not a lot. Exactly zero. <laughs> I promise you, if you send this message to Samantha, she will be bowled over and she will be ready to hop on the uh, phone for the first conversation. But before we get there, before we put the cart before the horse, let's just fill out this message. Okay, so you share this background, you share this passion. Quick question. Do you want to ask her for a job? Like, hey, hire me at Cohere Health? Or do you want to just ask her questions about her experience? Ask her questions about her experience. Yeah, you just want to learn at this point. You're still a student, so you want to see what's out there. Say, I'd love to learn about your journey and what you've discovered along the way. And then, big question, do you want to ask for an hour of her time tomorrow or maybe like 10 minutes next week? Oh, 10 minutes next week. Yeah, just make it easy, right? You know, she's still getting to know you a little bit. Don't come on too strong. You say, any chance you have even 10 minutes for a quick Zoom chat next week? Bam, you're off to the races. By the way, what's the, what's the mascot for Naperville North? Is that a Husky? Yeah. Okay, so then you say, go Huskies, bam, you're all good to go. Okay, so now, with that in mind, and by the way, I'm going to give all these templates, all these things to everyone online, and I'm going to send them to Jim and Jeff later so they can share them with you over email. But for now, Samantha's going to be bowled over. She's going to be like, oh my God, the first Husky who's ever contacted me. I can't wait to talk to you. What's your game plan for this conversation, Ayush? How can you make the most of this 10 minutes with this rock star alum? Prepare. Yeah, prepare. And so what do you want to ask her? What's going to help you discover what's important to you and your own journey? Um, questions about how she got into the profession, I guess, like her recruiting process. Yeah. Like she... How did you go from Naperville 
to a health tech startup? Um, maybe what, what's important to you? Like at this point, like, do, are you choosing colleges? Are you thinking about majors? What's in, what's on your agenda? Uh, choose like choosing majors, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, should, um, I major in CS what about like majoring in AI or something maybe? Like who knows what would be really relevant given that she's out there on the frontier. And then, like you said, um, if I wanted to follow in your footsteps, um, how would I do it? How would I get that first big break? And that will often lead to a really great conversation that could even lead to an internship before you know it. And so the bottom line is this, Ayush. I know it's crazy. I know I sound like this ancient guy from California telling you how to live your life. But you got to trust me on this. When you reach my age, you're going to have this thing called generativity, which is weighing really heavily on you. And I know that Jeff and Jim will agree with this, is that at your stage, it's all about growth. You want to go out there. You want to rock the world. More power to you. But then you get to your midlife and you're like, hey, how do I pay it forward? How do I have that sense of legacy? How do I build um, a great community around me. That's why Jim is giving back right now. And so if you reach out to the Samanthas of the world, I promise you, they will multiply that love many times over. And I used you have brought so much love to the Husky community. Huge props. Round of applause, everyone. All oh, right, yeah. Ayush, hit me up on LinkedIn right after the session. I'll hook you up with that profile review. Okay, thank you. Okay. So now, this is, we've gotten us off to the races here in terms of Here's how I find an alum. Here's how I reach out. Here's how I have a great conversation. What's on your mind? If you've got questions online, put them in the chat or raise your hand. Better yet, if you've got questions in the room, raise your hand and I will take those questions right now. No question is too big, too small, or too spicy. What do you guys want to know about? Got a question for Steph up here. Were there any questions there, Jim or Jeff? Everyone's quiet. Okay, hopefully they're working on their LinkedIn's. You know, it's so funny. I know that the sort of the norm these days for high school, for college is, well, is your laptop, you know, focus on me. Honestly, if your laptop is open and you're working on your LinkedIn profile, that's amazing. I want you guys making progress, coming out of this with lots of um, really good value. Okay, with that said, I've got another question for you. And that is, let's go back to the recruiter. So you could be a recruiter at a startup. You could be a recruiter at a big tech company, a big consulting company, whatever it is. You've got 1 billion profiles on LinkedIn. How do you decide who's a good fit? Is it A, the classes they took, B, the keywords they listed on their profile, or C, the GPA they worked so hard to earn back in high school or back in college? So again, if you're online, give me your letter answer right there. If you're in the class, here comes your next countdown. Get ready, A, B, or C. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> B, I heard a lot of Bs. Is that what you heard, Jim? Yes. Okay. Your students are rocking it because guess what? They nailed it. LinkedIn is nothing if not a keyword devouring monster. And to prove it to you, I'm going to take you straight into the belly of the beast to show you how it works. So again, here I am. I'm a recruiter actually right in your area, Chicago land. I'm looking for a project manager in Chicago with these skills. And check this out. LinkedIn's algorithm has to rank 1 billion people in order of fit. How do they do it? It turns out it's all about that headline, that little piece of text below your name. Why is it so important to LinkedIn's engineers? Well, the headline is the most character limited section of the entire profile, just 200 characters, which means it's harder to game, it's more authentic, and it gets more weight in the algorithm. So what I wanna do next is I wanna give one Husky or one friend online a free LinkedIn profile makeover. If you want to get found for internships, if you want the college admissions committee to love your LinkedIn profile, there is no one better to talk to than someone who's been on the inside of LinkedIn. And all you've got to do is raise your hand right now and I'll hook you up with everything you need right on the spot. Who's our next volunteer, Jim? A winner here. Just care to go. <laughs> all right. Come on down. You're the next contestant on your profile is right. Round of applause, everyone. I feel like this is like a career game show. Hi there. What's your name? Hi, I'm Ariana. Ariana, nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay, so Ariana, I know this feels a little bit early in your career, but if you could close your eyes and imagine maybe like the first summer after college, you have an amazing internship and you're super excited. Maybe you even have an internship in high school, frankly. 
what would you be doing? What would be making you so happy in terms of a specific internship? Um, probably like interning at a dental office because I want to be a dentist. Okay, so you would want to be sort of like, um, I don't know, what, what would you call it? Like, kind of like shadowing a dentist or doing more hygienist type stuff as just getting your hands wet in that field? Yeah, getting getting that hands-on experience. Okay, cool, cool. So let's do this. Let's come over here to LinkedIn. And we're going to use LinkedIn's superpowers to find that exact role. So we're going to come over here to search and we're going to say dental internship. And we're going to see what we find. I mean, I may be sort of missing the exact right words, but we'll figure out a good sense of what people are looking for. So we're going to come over here. What about this idea of a dental assistant? Is that maybe something where you'd want to start there and then over the course of your college career, go to dental school, ultimately become a, a full-time dentist? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So let's do this. Let's imagine that I'm searching for a dental assistant. What I want everyone else to do right now is not just bask in Ariana's greatness, although she is great, but also find your own greatness. So search for your own desired role on LinkedIn. Now tell me this, Ariana, of all of these people who are winning the LinkedIn lottery, in other words, they're appearing at the top of my list, what do they all have in common? Um, they have experience or registered in, and like dental assistant. Yeah, and that's the critical thing. Now, I know a lot of them have actually been dental assistants, but the number one thing that's driving this result is not the job that they had, but the fact that it's in their headline. And this creates a huge opportunity for you, Ariana, because it gives you the ability to be found for that even before you break into this world. So Ariana, do you mind if I pull up your profile, not to criticize it, but to shower it with love? For sure. Okay, let's make it happen. <laughs> All right, again, everyone root on Ariana. If you're online, give Ariana some emoji love. Yeah. We're going to make her profile rock. Um, is that the right spelling of your first name, Ariana? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then Beautiful. Kumar, K-U-M-A-R. Okay. Hey, the, oh my goodness. You are the number one Ariana Kumar <laughs> on LinkedIn. <laughs> you're already crushing it. Look at this. Ariana, I'm just blown away. Like the fact that you have a customized cover photo, a great headshot, and you're in high school. And the fact that you're focusing on that in your headline, oh my goodness, you should be teaching this class, Ariana. <laughs> okay, Ariana, I love, love, love your headline. Um, because again, the vast majority of students who go onto LinkedIn just say, hey, I'm a freshman at Kelly School of Business or I'm a student at Naperville, and that's great. But you're already broadcasting where you're headed, which means you can be found for those things. The only suggestion I would make is, because recruiters always search for a specific job title, what could you what could you put here? So you can't call yourself a dentist assistant yet because you're not that thing. How could you signal your interest in that role without being unethical? What should you put right here? Um, interested in becoming? Yeah, you could say aspiring, or even what you have before pursuing dentist assistant roles, exploring um, dentist assistant opportunities, whatever variety you want to put. Here's the beautiful news. It does not matter to the algorithm because the algorithm's frankly not that smart. It is a heat-seeking missile that wants to find the most important keyword, the desired job title, in your most important section, your headline. That's it. So for every one of your classmates out there, definitely give some love to Ariana, but also make that change right now on your own headline because time is a wasting. I guarantee you there are recruiters searching right now and there's no better time to take action. Okay. That's step number one, Ariana. But obviously, it's a little trickier than that because how competitive is this field, Ariana? Pretty competitive. Yeah, almost half a million people on LinkedIn alone focus on that role. And if it's hard for you, it's hard for the recruiter. So imagine now that you are a recruiter, Ariana. You have done your filter for dental assistant. You have half a million results. You definitely don't want to read through all of them. What else do you filter for? Um, specific skills. Yeah, the actual things that prove you can do the job, not just saying you're a wannabe. What do you think the top three skills are for this role, Ariana, if you had to guess? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, me neither. And <laughs> why guess at it? Well, we can get the truth. Here's the great news. It turns out that every single day, recruiters are handing you a list of these skills right on LinkedIn for free. Where do you think that is, Ariana? If anyone knows, shout it out. How about your fellow Husky? 
Jobs. Jobs, yes. If anyone out there has ever looked at a job posting, you know that inside these job postings is a lot of stuff, like a million bullet points and all these acronyms. You have to have dance certification, BLS certification. You have to have experience with operative fields and surgical retractors and blah, blah, blah. Now, if I could give you x-ray vision, Ariana, to get rid of all the fluff and just pull out the most important keywords, would you be interested? Yes. Okay, consider your superpower granted because wait till you see this. Now, Ariana, have you ever used ChatGPT for anything job related? Um, no, not for I, I know it's still early, but I'm just curious. <laughs> nah. What you're going to discover is like, I know ChatGPT is kind of like a scarlet letter right now in the sense that it's cool, but it's also maybe disapproved by certain teachers. Here's a really great use case. Come over here, you say, what are the top 15 most important skill keywords in this JD? Job description, we just paste it in, you know, no coding, no formatting. And then bam, we have the ability to basically see through all the fluff and just pull out the stuff that matters. Now, Ariana, that's step one. If you had to guess, what do you think step two is? How do we test your LinkedIn profile for these keywords? Uh, look for them on mine. Exactly. And we could do it manually, but again, we are living in the age of AI. Check this out. We grab your profile. Ariana, I'm just blown away. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to just tell you right now, everyone, if you want to build a great profile, you can do a lot worse than going to Ariana's profile and following in her footsteps. This is greatness. Okay, so we say, which of those keywords are missing from my profile? Again, this is not rocket science. It's not even as complicated as robotics or any of that stuff that you guys are doing. It is pure pattern matching. Do you have the most important things in your most important sections. And it says, hey, you actually have nailed a bunch of those things. So Ariana, you nailed, I think it was like um, cross-functional collaboration and project management, just a couple things missing. Now, I know that a lot of these things you're gonna learn in college or dental school, but let me just ask you, have you ever done anything with like documentation where you had to write down steps and basically figure out a process, anything like that? Yes, for sure. Okay. I have a <laughs> feeling like every high school student, especially every high school student first, has to do a lot of documentation. So where could you put that? Where inside your profile could you get credit for that skill? Um, in like my descriptions for like what I do on my robotics team. Yeah, oh my goodness. And by the way, I love that you filled out these things, but I will tell you this, Ariana, if you have an actual resume, like on a PDF somewhere or a Google doc, you can literally just paste in all of your bullet points for these jobs and that's gonna be even better because those bullet points on LinkedIn aren't gonna be buried in some obscure document. They're gonna be searched every day by recruiters on LinkedIn. And if you're ever feeling stuck, you just come over here and say, hey, um, suggest three revisions to my experience bullets to incorporate number three. And the beautiful thing about ChatGPT is it's so different than Alexa or Siri or those other AIs because it can actually be a little bit creative. It can come up with ways to get credit for something, even if it's not explicit in your document already. So bottom line, if you're ever feeling stuck, if you've got any writer's block, ChatGPT is your buddy. Okay, Ariana, you have been absolutely amazing. Would you mind if I give you one little homework assignment, if I promise you it's going to be the most important homework you ever do? Sounds good to me. Okay, and I know it's dangerous to say that with Mr. Schmidt in the room. I'm not saying to ignore Mr. Schmidt's homework. But the reason I say this is as a former teacher myself, I believe the whole point of education is to open the door to opportunity, to get access to a life that you want to live. And so I'm giving you this cheat sheet. I'm giving you this assignment. As you learn stuff, as you develop new skills, get credit for them in the place that matters most, which is the place that recruiters can find you, aka your LinkedIn profile. Ariana, you were fabulous. I cannot thank you enough. Huge round of applause. Oh my goodness. Okay. Jim and Mr. Schmidt, I have to confess, I was not expecting that. I was thinking no one's going to have a profile or they're going to have some basic stuff. Ariana blew all those expectations out of the water. Okay, what questions do you all have about the LinkedIn profile or the algorithm? If you're curious about the cover photo, the headshot, the about section, it's all fair game. Just raise your hand right in the classroom or raise your hand online. Any questions? Any questions, Jim, Mr. Schmidt? 
they're all still pretty quiet. I think they're all burned <laughs> out. They were at the uh, Robotics World Championship. Yeah, yeah. No worries at all. No worries. Okay, well, I will keep on. Yeah, go for it, Jim. If you've got a question. No, I'm saying I'm just glad they're still awake. Uh, yeah, yeah. They really are paying attention. This is great. Thank you. Okay, my pleasure. My pleasure. I know it's a little bit. Yeah, let's go. I have a question. It's not related to like, I guess it's related. Like, how are you changing her thing? Like, real. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So just to be clear, and I I should have I should have explained this because otherwise it's a little bit alarming. That is purely on my screen. So it's a Chrome extension that allows me to change any of the content on the screen, but not on LinkedIn. So don't worry, Ariana. I have not <laughs> hacked into your profile. Great question. <laughs> so cool. Okay. Well, I know it's a little bit later for you guys than for me out here in California. So I'm going to keep on rolling. Obviously, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn to ask me questions later. But for now, I've got one last question for you. And this is the big one. If you were a recruiter, and you had only one interview slot left for one of the coolest jobs in the world. Maybe it's working on the Tesla Cybertruck or some amazing new AI, and you had three strong candidates. Candidate A had applied on your website, candidate B came in via LinkedIn, and candidate C was referred. In other words, there was someone at the company who recommended them. Who would you prefer, A, B, or C? Okay, here we go. Connor saying C, Shania saying C, now we're going to the class. Three, two, one, go. Oh, interesting. I heard some different things. What did you hear, Jim? I heard a lot, mostly C. Okay, good, good. Yeah, so I know that referrals are a strange concept right now, but I have to promise you in a couple of years, especially once you get out there in the working world, you're going to understand that referrals are like gold. Let me explain why. What you're looking at on the screen is data that represents millions of job seekers across dozens of industries. And even though the industries are different and the jobs are different, what tends to be the same in almost every case is we all apply the, way, the same way. We go to a career site or a job board. So imagine going to google.com to apply for a job at Google or LinkedIn to apply to a panoply of jobs. And we apply online and it feels good because everyone's doing it. There's gotta be safety in numbers, except what seemed so safe was, was actually a trap. Because if you look at the fact that 75% of people apply online, a way smaller number of people are actually hired through that channel. In other words, applying online is a losing game. Now, what is more effective? Well, even though only one in 10 candidates get referred, again, someone on the inside going to bat for you, they take up the vast plurality of the one thing that we all want, which is they get hired. They get the golden ticket. And why is that? Let's go to Shania. Shania, you said C. If you don't mind unmuting for one second, what's your intuition? Why did you pick C? Why would a recruiter prefer someone who's referred? This is Shania Tanden online. Um, I think that it's because like connections are really important. And if the recruit it has a referral from a, an individual that they know, they're connected with that individual, so the recruiter will probably have the connection to the individual who's recruiting the recruit and so that they'll trust them more. Oh yeah, Shania, you nailed it, which is, hey, remember where we started? These recruiters have a crazy hard job, trying to fill 40 roles, thousands of resumes. Ultimately, if they're gonna go based on their gut, and you know they are because they only have six seconds, what does our gut always tell us? Go with the people we know. Go with the people we trust. That's what a referral is. Now, a referral can feel really daunting if you're an outsider. You know, you're trying to break into your first job, your first career. But what I'm about to show you is how to break into any company in the world, no matter how challenging. And I'm going to give away one last free profile review to whomever raises their hand first. It could be online. It could be in the classroom. Who wants that last review? Who wants to help me close out this session in style? Do we have someone in the room, Jim? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Huge round of applause, everyone. The grand finale. Hey there, what's your name? Uh, my name's Ian. Ian, great to meet you. Okay, Ian, I know this is tough to imagine already, but imagine that at some point in college, you have this sort of um, laser-like focus on getting the internship of your dreams. What is that internship? What is that company? 
Um, oh gosh. Um probably and, and dream big. Go crazy. All right. Um all right. Probably like an aerospace engineering um internship at NASA. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. I feel like if you're gonna be in like the first program, you gotta go big and NASA's as big as they come. So let's focus on that. Now tell me this, Ian. Do you know anyone at NASA today? No. No, neither do I, frankly. However, does that preclude you from getting a referral at NASA? Uh, probably not. Uh huh. Man. Where there's a will, there's a way. And so I'm going to show you what that way is precisely. Check this out. I want everyone to go back to LinkedIn one last time and do one final search for me. Search for your dream company, whether it's Google or Tesla or whatever. Search for the company come to the organization's page, and then click on the number of employees. And I know it's this humble little link over here, but it's a secret shortcut to an organizational directory that is more detailed than the one sitting on NASA's own servers. So I know it's tempting, Ian, but don't hack into NASA, just use LinkedIn, it's more legal. Okay, that being said, here are 42,000 NASA folks, any of whom could refer you, but we've got to find someone who has something in common with you. What do you think you might have in common with someone who works at NASA, Ian? Um, probably first robotics alumni. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness, Ian, I love that. <laughs> Here we go. Um, Jim, had you already told him about that? No. No, okay, Ian, you nailed it. So the fact of the matter is, is we all have things in common with people on the inside. And the fact that you're in first today links you up to an illustrious alumni body of over 100 NASA engineers, including Frank, who's a senior robotics engineer at NASA. Oh my goodness, what a cool guy to get to know. Now, you can reach out the same way that we talked about before. Hi, Frank, I'm a first uh, robotics student. I would love to learn from your experience, all of that good stuff. We've got to play the conversation a little bit different if you're ready for that referral, Ian. So once you chat with Frank, once you warm up the conversation by getting to know him, how can you pivot that conversation to potentially allow for a referral? Um, maybe like talking about how I'm interested in potentially like be like potentially learning from like something that he does or from NASA in general. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's role play it a little bit. This will be a fun way to close out the session. I'm Frank, you're Ian. Um, oh, so it sounds like you're interested in an uh, internship at NASA. Is that right, Ian? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's great. Have you applied online? Uh, I have not yet. Okay, well, that's what I'd recommend. Definitely apply online. We'd love to have your application. I wish you good luck. Oh. Would, you please... would, would you be willing to uh, <laughs> refer me? Uh -huh, yes, yes. Okay, so I will <laughs> tell you right now. I know it can feel super awkward and maybe even inappropriate to say, hey, would you be willing to refer me? But if you feel like you have a genuine connection with the person where maybe you're you know, talking about reading The Martian by Andy Weir and you're having all these things in common, you can definitely go for it. Just you know, um, have the courage of your convictions. But if you're not feeling it and you still want to get that idea out there, here's the power move. And I want everyone to write this down so you have it in a couple of years when you need it. You say, Frank, it's been so great chatting with you. I'm definitely going to apply for an internship. I just have one question for you. If you were back in my shoes, just trying to get your, your first start with NASA, what would you be doing to get that interview, just to get your foot in the door? And I guarantee you, when you frame it that way, Ian, where it's less of like a transactional conversation and more of a mentee-mentor kind of relationship, all of a sudden, Frank is going to be like, hey, here's the real deal. NASA is composed of people. People choose the people they like, which means referrals matter a lot here. If you could get a referral, that would mean a ton. And then once he's broached the topic, it's a lot easier to walk through the door now that he's opened it up. How does that feel, Ian? Sounds good to me. Okay, Ian, I'm going to hold you to this. I'm going to put a memo on my calendar for like two years from now. How far are you in high school, Ian? I'm a junior right now. You're a junior. Okay, so I'm going to follow up with you in two years. I'm going to give you the free profile review now. But I'm going to follow up with you in two years to make sure that in spring of 2026, you are applying for that internship. How does that sound? Sounds good, thank you. Okay, Ian, you were awesome. Huge round of applause, everyone. Beautifully done, oh my goodness. Jim, 
Mr. Schmidt, I'm blown away by your students. They are going places maybe even beyond our own uh, own galaxy. Okay, that being said, I know you guys are tired. It's been a long week. Let me just wrap up with a couple of bonus goodies and then you can get off to the next chapter in your adventures. So the first thing I wanted to share with you is obviously if you want a free profile review, don't be shy about it. Just look me up on LinkedIn, send me a message the way that I just taught you to. I'm happy to give you that profile review now or when you're a freshman in college or whenever you want it, whenever is useful. But also, even if you did not win the free profile review, I'd still love to stay in touch because I want to be there to support you. I feel like for me, my life has been changed by so many amazing adults who helped me when I was in your shoes. And like I said, generativity is real. I want to pay it forward. So if there's anything I can do for you, send me a message. Happy to stay in touch. Number two is, if you did not win a free LinkedIn profile review, I've got another goodie for you, which is you can actually come to Amazon and pull this crazy hack. Check this out. Come to Amazon and say, hey, I want that, that book that Jeremy talked about so I can work on my resume. Well, guess what? You don't have to pay for it because I think you've got better things to spend your money on than books on Amazon. But the reality is, is if you sign up for a free trial of Kindle Unlimited or Audible, you can download the book, cancel the trial immediately before you spend anything, and you keep the book forever with my compliments and those of Jeff Bezos, I like to think. And then <laughs> one final crazy thing. I haven't checked with Jeff on that, but I have a feeling. Okay. Back when I was in grad school, back in the digital stone ages, as I like to call them, I was an intern at Apple in the summer of 2011. And that means I was at the big Apple developers conference in San Francisco where Steve Jobs gave the last keynote of his illustrious Apple career. And even though he was already really sick at the time, he got up on that stage and he delivered this absolutely mesmerizing speech, including this final slide that I'll never forget, one more thing. And on that morning in July of 2011, Steve introduced the world to Siri for the very first time. Now I know that Siri is not looking too hot these days, at least by comparison to ChatGPT, but I still believe there's this direct line between the world that Steve ushered in that morning and the world that we're living in right now. So in honor of Steve, in honor of Siri, I've got one more thing for you, and I call it Profile Bot 4K. Here's how it works. I know that LinkedIn is not sexy. I know that LinkedIn is probably the last place you want to spend your time online, but hopefully now you understand why it's valuable, not just to waste time, but to get access to opportunity to build the life that you want. And so if you want to make your LinkedIn rock, here's how you do it. You come over here, you say, I want to be an aerospace engineer, but I don't really have a background in it yet. I'm still a student. I'm still getting my start. Well, this tool takes everything that I know about LinkedIn and it basically reverse engineers it. It gives you a headline, an about section, an experience section, even posts you can make on LinkedIn if you want to start to stand out in this field. It gives you a cover photo you can use to stand out visually at the top of the page. And then finally, it has this LinkedIn profile coach where you can say, what internships should I get to launch this career or whatever's on your mind? Where should I go to college? And it will guide you on this path to help you find the right opportunities, the right pathways, to give you the life that you've dreamt of. And as a result, I want you to take this tool, which is free for you forever. Again, I'm gonna share the link with Jim and Mr. Schmidt afterwards so you have access, so you can live fully in the words that Steve gave us, which is, hey, life is short. Even at age 17, you don't have an endless amount of time to accomplish the incredible things that you're capable of. So let's take this time, this opportunity, and go out there and make a big freaking dent in the universe because as Steve said, otherwise, why else even be here? Thank you all so much. Thanks to Jim, to Mr. Schmidt, to all the amazing volunteers. And here is wishing you incredible adventures in this world and beyond. Thank you all so much.